Can you lift your hands where you are? This is not the time to be quiet. And tell the Lord thank you. Because you are a product of his grace. Everything around your life speaks of the grace and the mercy of God. It's not because you deserved it. It's not because you earned it. Lift your hands, open your mouth and begin to thank him. Open your mouth and begin to thank him. Right where you are. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and give him praise. Open your mouth and bless his name. In Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 9 to 10. We're going to take out some time to really thank the Lord. I see the reason why many people don't receive from God. They are not really grateful for the things he did before. You have to be detailed in your gratitude. I'm telling you, no matter how small you think that thing is, you didn't get it because you earned it. It was the grace of God. Sorry about that testimony about blocked ears. It was deaf ears, not blocked. You were there with me. Completely deaf. Imagine when you are faced with that situation. She couldn't hear anything. Two of them, two weeks, eight years, opened in few minutes. Even if you were to sell that miracle in the market, how much will you buy it? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of us are... We have, not, we have not taken time to really excel in the grace of thanksgiving. You have to be grateful. You have to be grateful. Even if you have one hour to pray, if you spend 45 minutes thanking God, you prayed right. Believe me. God knows automatically that every time thanksgiving comes from his children, is a request for more. You don't need to tell him. How many of you who are fathers... Or mothers how many of you can stand a child that you do everything you go out of your ways especially now with the economy of nations to provide for them and they don't tell you a single thank you for everything you do how many of you will be happy some of you will look for Cain. I need to beat sense into this child but many of us are like that you hear a testimony being read out of what God did. I expected that we'll be excited. I expected that thanksgiving is loud. That's why it's called thanksgiving. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9 to 10. Are you guys putting it on or should I just go? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9 to 10. We are going to take time to really thank the Lord today. For I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Look at this now. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. There are many people who feel that you don't deserve what God gave you. They feel that it was supposed to come to them. There are many of you since you entered this new level where you are, whether financially, whether ministerially, whether spiritually or otherwise, you have gained so many enemies. Some people are no longer happy with you because they feel you don't deserve it. But like Paul the Apostle, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. And his grace towards me was not in vain. Even though I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I but the grace of God which was with me. Some of you would have been dead by now if it were not the grace of God. Some of us would have been in hospital. Do you know, sometimes when I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to pray, see, eh, it's better that you are broke than you are sick. None of them should be an option. But if you were forced, it is better you are broke than you are sick watching every day life come leaving you and not only is life leaving you your situation is not getting any better and your finances are going you watch all that you worked for going down the drain sometimes when i have the opportunity to visit people in the hospitals and pray for them 
sympathy wells up. I wish I was God. Nobody would be in the hospital. But you know, if there's nobody in the hospital, nurses and doctors will not have their daily bread. You know, the God we serve is an amazing God. Everybody pray in the morning and say, God, give us our daily bread. The person selling coffee is praying that God will send customers. Is that true? And he's hoping that somebody, somebody who is praying against death will be a customer. Are you ready to thank God? But look at us. We are alive. We are hale and hearty. Look at the many things that God is doing. Can you in five minutes open your mouth? Listen. I want you to be intelligent as you pray. Mention everything, including the things you've not mentioned in a long while. Thank him. Do you know that to sleep and wake up is a testimony? You don't know because you have taken it for granted. Some of us feel it's our best right as children of God. <laughs> Hear me? Let me ask you a question. What was the difference between the sin that King Saul committed and the one that David committed? If you were to judge from the human perspective, who did worse? It was David. But because of one mistake, Saul was cut off. And so bad was he cut off that even when the night before he would die, he went to God, God did not answer him. You are here, you pray and God answer you. Some of you, all through the week, you are messed up, you are depressed, you feel like God has forgotten you, then you come for a service like this or like the one we had on Monday or Sunday and a prophetic word hits you. Not because some of you don't even pray when, when those kind of miracles come to you. It's just because of the love of God. David killed somebody's husband, married the woman, committed all kinds of atrocities. God said, you are the man after my heart. It's the grace of God that differs us. Some of you say, Apostle, why should I thank God? He has not given me a job. Let me ask you a question. How have you been feeding? How have you been alive? There are people with big jobs who will wish to have half of what you have. If we can take time to really thank God, you will see that God is not lacking in any aspect of his faithfulness. And it will prepare your heart for what he is about to do. Do you know that ingratitude can blind your eyes from the miracles that are ahead of you? May God never allow us to be ingrate. This afternoon before coming, I danced before God for almost 30 minutes. You will not believe it. So much that I forgot that time had gone. I was not asking God. It's not that kind of dance that you're asking for anything. I just danced. There was a song in my spirit, so I looked for it in YouTube, played it, and started dancing. Just telling God, thank you. And I told myself something before coming here. I said, I will, there will never be a, a time in this ministry where I will see God do miracles and I will not express my gratitude. I will never get used to miracles. I will never. Now, can you lift your voice? Don't be quiet. And in the next two, three minutes, open your mouth in details and begin to give him thanks. Some of you need to thank him that you are saved. God has rescued you from sin. He has rescued you from death. He has rescued you from addiction, from pain. Some of you need to thank him that you are alive. So I live today because God kept me. Don't sing, just thank him. I'm alive today only because of his grace. He kept me. God kept me, he kept me, so I would let go. We see how far you brought us. I'm so glad you found us worthy. We can see, we can hear, and we know it's your grace. All our days we will 
sing your praise. Would you thank him for the healing of those amongst you who were sick? You almost lost your parents, but God spared them. Thank him for his provision. Thank him for his protection. Don't take for granted the things he has done. What a faithful God we serve. Thank him for your family. What a glorious God. He doesn't look at our qualification before he releases his blessings. His mercies are new to us every morning. Great are his faithfulness. Great are his faithfulness towards us. I'm so glad you found me one. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace all my days. I will sing your Oh, I'm so glad you found me worthy. Oh, I can see and I can tell and I know it's your grace. All my days I will see. Come on, say I can see, I can see. I can say, oh, I know it's your grace. All my days, I will be your grace. Come on, if you believe, say, I can see God. I can, I can tell, I can say, oh, I know it's your grace. All my days, all my days, I will sing. Oh, my days, take care of that task. Take care of that I can see, I can see, I can see, I can see, I can I see, I can 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 out of the struggle, out of the trouble, out of the marriage, and you set my feet upon the rock. I will see. If you believe it, I can see you, God. him for transformation look at your life and see what the word of God has done to you when you came here you were weak when you came here you didn't have faith when you came here you were depressed but look at your life now look at what the word of God has made out of you you are more than a conqueror victorious in Christ Jesus come on don't just stand there give him praise Thank him. Be sincere that he has done more than enough. Be sincere that he's been good. Be sincere that he's been good. Wonderful, marvelous are the works 
of your hands great is your name wonderful and marvelous are the works of your great is your name great is your name let's do it one more time so everybody can sing it together wonderful marvelous are the works of your hands we render thanksgiving to you today jesus If you believe it, sing wonderful, marvelous, wonderful, wonderful, marvelous, marvelous of your hands. Great. If you believe it, say wonderful. Lift your hands and let's declare wonderful marvelous seconds and give them praise. Marvelous are the works of your hands. My life is an expression of your goodness. How I've been able to survive all of this trouble. How I have survived the pain. How I have survived and how you have brought me this far. You alone deserve the glory and the praise. Instead of complaining, give him praise. Instead of grumbling, give him praise. Instead of murmuring, thank him from the depths of your heart. Of your hands. Wonderful. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. I have seen what the Lord has done. That's the song. 
What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord. Hear me. Listen. This morning I was praying. Hear me. I was praying this morning, early hours, and I had a vision. And in the vision, I saw God spoke to me through one of his servants. Please turn that off. And God said to me that sometimes some discomfort that you experience, some unpleasant situations that you experience, some inconveniences are a sign that you have changed the levels. Listen. When a shoe is no longer your size, it means you have outgrown that size. You forget about what you, what you are going through now may just be a sign that you have changed level in the spirit realm and is about to materialize in the physical. Do you believe it at all? Listen, this is not a place, I don't, I'm not whining you. I'm telling you the wisdom of the spirit. If only sometimes we have the eyes of faith to see. The Bible says, Psalms 138, give it to us, verse 7 and 8. It said, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. He said, you will stretch forth your hand and your right arm will save me. Thank God I can quote it. Then he says that the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. But he will stretch out his hand to you while you are in the midst of trouble. So all the inconveniences that you may be going through now may just be a sign that there's been, there's been a change in the spirit realm. Your life is about to become an expression of that which has been released to you in the heavens. So when I sing that song, I'm not only thanking God for what he has done, but we are also thanking him in advance. You are here and you don't know what God is about to do for you next week. You don't know what is about to happen tomorrow. You don't know the grace that is about to rest on your life, even in this service. So join me as we sing that song. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. What we waited for. What we waited for has come to pass. See what. Come on, lift your voice and let's declare. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. See what the Lord, the Lord has, has done in your life, in your family. What, what we wait for. Yeah. your hands and let's declare one more time. See what the Lord has done. Yeah. you're waiting for will come to pass doesn't matter how far it takes you will see what the Lord has done so what you are waiting for must surely come to pass doesn't matter how long it tarries you will see with your eyes the Lord God told Simeon that he will not die until his eyes see the consolation of Israel. And I prophesy to you that you remain alive until you see the goodness of God. I'm speaking prophetically to whatever part of your life that it will apply. 
you will remain alive this year until you see the greatness of the hand of God. Amen. Is that Julius? You're about to get married, but I know that one. You've not told me, but gossip, they fly. Now, I have a prophetic word for you. Do you believe it? God said to tell you just now. Uh, no, don't leave the mic. No, there's no need for mic. I'm not confirming anything. God said to tell you that the miracle he will do for you is not even your wedding. That means the wedding is sorted out. Between now, your wedding, and a few months after your wedding, there's a big surprise that God has for you. Amen. You know, it's a risk to speak for God. You have to know God well enough to know that the God that you are speaking for is not a fraud. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. God is a good God. You know, those miracles happened after the anointing. It was not in the anointing service. All right? I was seeing people on the line and I was so tired like now. I'm already tired. I've not even started preaching because I had a stressful week. And they brought them to me. One of them deaf completely for two weeks. The other one deaf for eight years. Couldn't speak well. And right there before my eyes, their ears opened. And the lady could speak. God is not scared. I don't know, I don't know your experiences with God, but you see... Don't conclude based on your experience. Just in case your, your experiences were not favorable. Don't conclude. God is not scam. I can die for this thing. I've seen him do it again and again and again and again and again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Wave your hands and give him praise. Blessed be your great name. Blessed be your mighty name. Glory be to God in the highest. For his mercies endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Shout amen. amen. Now clap your hands for the King of Kings. I said clap your hands to the King of Kings. You didn't put out your hands, so clap and celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Just hug one or two people beside you. Welcome them to Pneumatech. And take, take your beautiful seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. God is in the business of doing awesome things. We are in a season of the supernatural. Do you know that? Right from the anointing service, there's been a strange release of the hand of God on us. We are in a season of the supernatural. Alright? This is a season where your, no, your knowledge of God and your work with God is going to be lubricated with tangible testimonies. That as you grow in your knowledge of God, as you are growing in your work with God, that there will be evidences that God, by the mighty hand of His Spirit, will begin to produce in your life. You don't sound like you believe it. You still don't sound like you believe it. I said you still don't sound like you have faith to receive. Amen. You see, when you, when you make a very rigid response, you are placing a seal on that which you are receiving from God. It's not just church hype. Alright? It's not just church hype. Joy has a sound. The Bible says, make a joyful noise. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And it is with joy that you draw from the wells of salvation. God is about to do awesome things in our midst. Like you have never seen before. Not just here, but to our global family. Amen. And his name will be praised in Jesus' name. How many of you enjoyed uh, last Sunday, Pneumatech? For those of us on site, we were at Fina Hall. Amen. 
And I don't think that that facility has been jammed to capacity like it was for Sunday and Monday. I mean, the entire environment, it was so filled up. The only place we didn't use was the office. <laughs> and it was because we ran out of equipment. Amen. And we give God the praise for that. Amen. How many of you enjoyed the, the anointing service? Uh -huh. I hope you know that the same grace available in that service is still around today. Oh. God does not visit. He dwells with his people. Are you hearing me? The fact that I'm going to teach today does not mean that I... No, no, no. Don't, don't be too myopic in your mindset. The Bible says in the gospel according to Luke one time that Jesus was in the synagogue teaching and the power of God was present to heal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God does not visit his people. He dwells with his people. The same grace that was available that day is available now. So all you need to do is open your heart and receive. The preacher may, have not, may say nothing that has to do with miracles. But you came here with a sick body. You came here need, you know, in need of deliverance from oppression. You came here in need of divine intervention. While the world is going forth, you are just receiving it instantly. Do you believe that? We need to train our mentality in receiving from God. God does not borrow his power. And God does not go on vacation. He's constant. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't be fooled because I'm teaching. While you are seated listening to the word of God, be receiving whatever it is you came desiring God to do for you. And in the name of Jesus, before the end of this service, you will receive the fullness of your heart desires from the Lord. Somebody believe it, shout it loud, amen. Come on, let your amen shake this roof. Hallelujah. Just be receiving. Oh, don't, don't say, ah, he's teaching today. Ah, no, 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 no. Every service is a miracle service. Somebody told me that a group of people who come for our meetings from a particular location in Meduguri say they only come during miracle service. I say, oh, sorry for them. That means they only receive from God once in a month. When you have the opportunity to receive every Sunday, he said, behold, I make all things new. So your constant coming into the presence of God brings renewal into your life. Refreshing, strengthening. If we close the service at this point, some of you are already filled. Meanwhile, we just started. Are you seeing that? Uh -huh. So what a joy it is to come to the house of God. And let me make an appeal to those who are watching me from Beduguri. The internet was not meant for you. It's meant for people from USA, United Kingdom, South America, Ethiopia, and Abuja, Lagos. Uh -huh. You guys in Beduguri, put on your shoes and start coming here now. 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 You don't know if your word will come for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I was ministering in a conference yesterday and as soon as I got up stage, somebody that God has spoken to me the previous day, she stood up and left. The way she did the previous day. I said, Kai, may you not be robbed of all that you want to receive from God. See, when you come to God, you must believe that he is. And that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When you are diligent in seeking God, there will be patience. You stay till the end. That's why I thank God for those who come after the service to see me. As much as some of us will not want them to say you are disturbing Papa and all of that. But you see, it's a lot of faith for th sometimes when you look at it. They stay till the end, till they see me because they still believe. Do you believe something good is about to happen for you? so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you set for tonight? I'm excited with what I'm about to share with you. Many of us will learn. I want us to conclude the series on wisdom for exploits. But tonight's teaching is something you will really live to remember. The word of God is the only tool for transformation. You heard the testimony of that lady. I thank God that my prayers are now the right way. And now I can pray and see God answer me that I call things by my prayer. Did you hear that testimony? 
When I sat there and heard it, I told Pastor Prince that that's the kind of testimony I want to hear. Yeah, thank God for healing of this, deliverance of that, miracle, this, but there's nothing compared to the miracle of transformation. All right? That people are changed by the information they are receiving. People who go to join the Illuminati secret cult or people who go into Yahoo fraud star scheme and all of that. What, what do you think they heard that convinced them well enough to take that huge risk? That means the information that a man receives is capable of altering the state of his mind. But the word of God that you receive not only changes your mind, it changes your life. And it doesn't change it for the worse, it changes it for the better. Whether you are old, you are middle aged, or you are young, the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. The same word, different people, but the same result, transformation. Are you ready for what God will do tonight? I want you to ask the Lord to satisfy you by the knowledge and the wisdom of his word today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for two minutes while you are sitting. You have captured my heart. Consume my heart with your love. You have captured my heart. Consume my heart with your love. Say you have captured, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Come on, lift your voice and declare, you have captured my heart. That's more than enough. Oh, if all we say is Jesus, that's the name above every other name. Do see what you will always say? If who can help is Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, that's more than enough. If all you have is Jesus, 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 that's more. Come on, lift your voice and let's sing it one more time. Say. Call his name Jesus. Call his name Jesus. Come and mention that name, the name above every other name. Say all I say. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. That's the name that carries your deliverance. That's the name that bears your testimony. 
That's the name that seals your life. That's the rock upon which you stand. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. Lord, let your word come forth with wisdom, with light, with power, and with grace. Let joy break forth in our hearts. But most importantly, let understanding be received. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 7 to 12. Don't worry, I apologize for those of us in the hall. Very soon, I'm sure, um, power will be restored. Amen. Sorry about the little uh, discomfort. I want you to pray and pray. And expect the day when we'll move into our own facility with air condition. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Stay alive and stay connected till that day. Where we, nothing disturbs our worship. Are you hearing me? Remember that every discomfort is a sign. That you are going to the next level. Tell your neighbor I'm going to the next level. I don't know about you. Amen. All right, let's get to the word. Wisdom for exploits, part four. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32b. In the King James translation, it says that the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Last week, we spoke about the place of diligence. If you must do exploits in the kingdom. The week before that, we spoke about the power of faith. And these are very important principles that we must embrace if we must do exploit in the kingdom. If we must do exploits in life. Exploits means supernatural feat, uncommon achievement. Achievements or works that make you stand out in your generation, in your territory, in your community. Exploits are the things, the results in your life that makes you a mighty man in the kingdom. Amen. Part four and the final part for this series. The power of strategic relationships. Please, I'd like you to be patient with me. I may be a bit slow because the screen in front is not visible. So, um, while they are working on the power I will have to go through reading my Bible again and again Amen Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 7 to 12 and I want you to pay attention to all the subject, all the texts that we are going to read so we can gain understanding Amen then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. What is the vanity here? Of course, you know what vanity means. It means a useless work, something that is in vain. So what is the vanity? He said, there is one, verse 8. Did you open your Bibles? Some of you didn't come to church with Bibles. We have trained you to be looking at screens. We apologize. All right. Yeah, but for today, open your Bibles. If you don't have, share with your neighbor. Amen. Yeah, young lady, share with your neighbor. Don't be afraid that they will toast you after the service. And share. After the service, you can now decide to say no or yes. Amen. Why shouldn't they come after you? You are not married now, so let them come after you. As long as you are not married, you are not free. Hallelujah. Somebody say that is exploit. <laughs> you people, and sometimes I wonder... You are amazing. You are wonderful people. <laughs> Amen. So in case you are a single lady and uh, the person beside you that has a Bible is a, a gentleman, do well to share the Bible. Keep your note till after the service. Amen. Uh, but make sure you don't judge a book by its cover. Amen. Uh, some si silent millionaires are sitting here. Amen. So don't say no to your destiny helper, to your rest. You say no to your rest, then you now, you now, you now go and embrace distress. 
Is that true? Uh-huh. Not all that glitters is gold, though. I hope you know. Hallelujah. All right, that was enough uh, jokes so that you can forget about the heat. Can we get to the word now? The way you are laughing we will not teach you. Amen. Uh-huh. And you too, brother, it's not every lady beside you that is. Some of them are married, though. Forget that they didn't wear their ring. Amen. Don't go and uh, talk to somebody that has already born two children and say that the Lord said. Which Lord? Amen. Which Lord spoke to you? Amen. See the Lord of your, your ancestors or the Lord of your fathers? <laughs> eh? No, your village people have been calling you. They, you have been missing their call. So today now you pick their call and hallelujah. Amen. Sorry, our online people, we joke a lot, you know. The presence of God is a fullness of joy. Let's start from verse 7 again. Then I returned and saw vanity under the sun. What is the vanity? Look at verse 8. It says, there is one alone without companion. He has neither son. Please pay attention to the reading. Don't forget about the light. I want you to get somebody, somebody you need to catch something here. Hmm? When you come to church, come with your eyes and your ears and your brain. Amen. Somebody say, well, in church, we need to be in the spirit. Being in the spirit doesn't mean that you don't use your head. Though. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, there is one alone without companion. He has neither son nor brother. Yet there is no end to all his labors, nor is his eyes satisfied with riches. But he never asks, for whom do I toil and deprive myself of good? This also is vanity and a grave misfortune. So this tells you that this guy is working, laboring very hard. And the reason why he's laboring so hard to make ends meet is because he's alone. He has no help from anybody. And that's not the only evil thing there. The greater disaster is that after working so hard, he would die and leave everything he has labored to build, not knowing who will enjoy it. That means that it is perilous. It is disastrous to be alone, to live a one-man life, to live as though you are an island is disastrous. Verse 9, he said, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Bishop answer because he's married. He said, yeah. Amen. Married people, do you agree? Ah, you are quiet. Is it the economy? Sir, Apostle, when I, before I got married, 50,000 was enough for a whole month. Now, 50,000, my mind. <laughs> Amen. Let's continue, please. <laughs> You have not started buying pampas, more fix. And uh, what's the other one? And what's the other name of pampas? Huh? Eh? Huggies. Ah. Huggies is about to become expensive. Oh, they are leaving Nigeria. Uh, because they have left Nigeria. So it's no longer produced in Nigeria. So uh, fathers and mothers, begin to tighten your belt very well in the name of Jesus Christ. Say a louder amen. Amen. Some single people are saying, I don't go marry, I don't go marry. Ah. You better marry now. Amen. Have you ever heard that the prices of things go down? Yeah, so the earlier, the better. Amen. God will supply all your needs according to his bogus riches in glory. Hallelujah. And make sure you remember the pastor when God, God has supplied. Hallelujah. Your amen died at that point. You guys, I need to preach about giving to you. All right, let's get to the teaching now. Okay? We apologize for those of you who are here for the first time, okay? Don't worry, we are coordinated. Just that uh, a lot of people come to church. Some come depressed. So, so moments like this will get them a little bit, you know. Amen. 
He said, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Somebody say, God forbid. He said, again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. This is only for married people. If I cut you, if I cut, if I if I squeeze you, eh? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The next time you see a woman, you run. If I squeeze you like this, no church people are wonderful people. You have to put. If two lie down together, they will keep warm. Only for married people. He said, but how can one be warm alone? Pray in tongues. <laughs> I'm just joking. Though, he said, verse 12 now, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Part four, wisdom for exploits, the power of strategic relationships. The power of of strategic relationships. I pray for you today that at the end of this meeting, may God send strategic destiny relationships into your life. All of you that have been struggling alone, trying to survive alone, it comes to an end today. May God send strategic help as your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every parasitic and predatorial relationship around your life. Did you hear what I said? Some relationships are parasitic. They just keep sucking from you. That's not even, that's not worse. Though. The worst is predatorial pre relationship. It's a predator. It sucks from you and it's killing you at the same time. I banish them from your life after today. Every conspiracy around you, friends, people who pretend to be friends, who are just there to drain your life, who are there to waste your life and then run when you are wasted. May the hand of God shift them out of your life, out of your space, in the name of Jesus Christ. And those of you that are about to get married to a partner that will be parasitic, may that marriage never hold. All right? I'm speaking prophetically. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If anything had blinded your eyes that you're about to get married to a Jezebel or you're about to get married to Cain, huh? to Judas, people who will make you feel that marriage is, is, is hell on earth, may God show you mercy and intervene. Some of, you, some of you are not married. You are with the wrong people in your relationship. That's the reason why you have spent years and there is nothing fruitful about it. You just keep going around in cycle. From today, I separate you from that person. I don't care if you cry later. I'll separate you from that person. And may God connect you with the right people. Finally, may God also make you a right person to somebody. In Jesus' name we pray. The power of strategic relationship. So the Bible where we read in Ecclesiastes is clear to us. The power and the advantage of two or more. He say, two are better than one for they have a good reward for their labor. That means the labor of two people together will yield. At worst, one person will yield. But when you labor alone, it becomes difficult. It brings you to a state of fertility. He said, for two, a two, a, a, for two shall withstand him. In the midst of crisis, when you have helpers, when you have relationships around you, you can thrive. He said, but a threefold cord is not easily broken. So there is an advantage to numbers. There is an advantage to having relationships around your life. I don't think there's not there's anything more important in life than relationship. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28, the Bible says God 
describing his purpose for creating man. He says, let us make man in our image. Notice that the subject there was singular. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let, let them have dominion. In verse 27, the Bible says, so God created man in his image. He says, male and female, he created them. So God knew that for dominion to be achieved, which was the purpose of creating man, then man will have to exist within the context of a relationship. It takes more than one to exact dominion territorially. It takes more than one to exact dominion globally. It takes more than one. Any man impacting his generation and subduing and having dominion over a particular terrain is doing it by the support of, a, of, of many people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So there is power in relationship. I want to show you a story in the Bible that you will really, really go back and study again. Judges chapter 1. From verse 1 to 10 and verse 17. By this time, Joshua had died. Remember that Joshua was the one who led the children of Israel into the promised land and God used him to conquer many nations, to subdue those nations and to win over the lands for the children of Israel so that every tribe had their allocation. But when Joshua died, there was still so much land to conquer. Some of the tribes had not fully accessed and occupied or possessed their possession. And so from verse 1, now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall be first to go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. But look at this. So Judah said to Simeon, his brother, Come with me to my allotted territory, that we may fight against the Canaanites. Tell your neighbor, don't go to battle alone. At worst, if nobody follows you, go with God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But don't fight in this life. Don't fight alone. Don't fight alone. And I will likewise go with you to your allotted territory. And Simeon went with him. Now look at the exploits that they achieved. Because Judah was wise enough to collaborate with another tribe. Then Judah went up. And the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. And they killed 10,000 men. Now, notice in this verse, the Bible says that Judah went up. Meanwhile, in the previous verse, there were two that teamed up. But they were so united that the two became one force. One irresistible force. Go back to verse 4. And the Bible says the Lord delivered into their hand the Canaanites and the Perizzites. So their conquest increased because they were more than one. Because they were united. And they killed 10,000 men at Bezek. As a matter of fact, because Judah united with another tribe, they were able to bring down a principality. The Bible called him Adoni Bezek in Bezek. The word Adonai is the word Lord in Hebrew. This guy was not just a king, he was a principality. And fought against him and they defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Go on. And they found, and then Adonibezet fled and they pursued him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and his big toes. Now let me explain to you why they did that. Your thumb is what allows your hand to grip or to grab something. Without your thumb, you cannot grab a thing and you cannot hold it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then your big toe is what gives stability and motion to your legs. If they cut off that toe, you can't run fast. You can't walk fast. Go on. And Adam Nebezek said, 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off, used to gather scraps under my table. Look at this king. So I tell you, he was a principality. This was how he subdued 70 kings. This guy was, this guy was, a, he, he was a demoniac. This guy was a, a wizard. To a point where kings were reduced to gathering scrap of food under the table. They, he, he, he reduced the dignity of these people. 
This was the guy that the children of Israel were, were against. But because Judah was united with another tribe, they were able to bring down. Let's, let me tell you, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. When it comes to wrestling, when it comes to spiritual warfare, it's not I, it's we. Many of you are, you are casualties now because you decided to fight alone. Don't you try it. Especially when you are about to move into a new season where you know you will have many enemies, begin to gather many allies. Let me teach you something. When God begins to bless you, don't be stingy. Many of you are stingy. I love you, but let me tell you the truth. Many of you are stingy. When God begins to bless you in any way possible, ensure that it goes around. You can't share for everybody, but make sure you impact people because in the day of adversity, you will need people to stand with you. You will need help. You will need support. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you need to repent from that stinginess. And don't say, eh, he's talking because I've not given you. What do I need from you? With all due respect, and I love you, but <laughs> I'm telling you for your good. Many of us have not conquered self. That's why you are still in that small size blessing. God wants to increase and enlarge you, but your heart is still glued to self. And God knows if he blesses you with these mega blessings, demons will show up and they will just get you easily because you are alone. Someone say, say, no, me, I don't like people. I don't want the one that will come and insult me. I don't want, no, 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 no. The fact that you have been hurt by the wrong relationships does not make the principle of relationship an option when it comes to surviving in life. It is still a necessity. Just because you go to the market and buy rotten tomatoes does not mean all the tomatoes in the market are bad. You were just not lucky. If you complain that a man hurt you, you will still rejoice because another man caused you to celebrate. God will give you those kind of people. Today, many people will be healed from heartbreaks because when you talk about relationship, many of us are, are, are drawing in because we are victims of all kinds of arrows, all kinds of piercings. God will heal you and provide the right relationships. Let's, let's finish the reading. Where are we? It says, so God has repaid me as I have done. Then they brought him to Jerusalem and there he died. Let's go on. Now the children of Judah fought against Jerusalem and took it and they struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city of fire. And afterward, the children of Judah went. So they kept having victory upon victory. Why? Because they teamed up with Simeon. Now go to verse 16 and verse 17. When they now decided, oh, you know, sometimes you will not know the people that God is using to help you succeed. Some of them, you may not know them because they pray secretly for you. Some of you don't know, as you are seated right now, you don't know, or you are listening right now, you don't know how many people God has had to keep for months praying every night for you. Some of us are so, we are so proud to think that you achieved everything by yourself. Do you know the Bible speaks of arrows that fly by day? Are you the most prayerful that no one has caught you? Not everybody that God is using to sustain your survival on earth will be known to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm a man of God and I know God is using me and has used me to impact the lives of so many people. And God has also used a lot of people to bless me. Some of them I don't know. Some of them I may never know. But every time God uses people to bless me, whether I know them or not, whether I know where it's coming from or not, I send a prayer. Oh God, just the way I don't know who this person is that saw the need, saw that I was in this need and brought this resource. Lord, raise help us in their time of need. Many people around you. Now, Judah became so successful, he thought it was because of him. You know, God had said from the beginning of the chapter that I have given them to Judah. So, Judah became successful as he was conquering a lot of cities. And he now felt, that, he now forgot the fact that he was helped by another tribe. He now felt that, ah, I'm the one, I'm the most choice of God. I'm the blessed of the Lord. It's only me that God loves. It is by my power that I have achieved everything like some of us are feeling now. 
You know, I was reading a story today. Okay, I'll come to that. So, look at what happened. When Judah became proud and forgot the fact that he was succeeding and doing exploit because of the power of two. He said, now the children of the Kenite, Moses, Moses' father-in-law went up from the city of Palms with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lies in the south near Aran. And they went and dwelt among the people. Go on. Now they are alone. And Judah went with his brother Simeon and they attacked the Canaanites who inhabited Zephath and utterly destroyed it. So the name of the city was called Homer. But now Judah decided to go alone. Also, okay, let's continue. Also Judah took Gaza with his territory. He was still succeeding. Go to the next verse. So the Lord was with Judah and they drove out the mountaineers. But they could not drive out the inhabitants of the lowland. Do you, do you realize that only Judah was mentioned in this verse? A time came where he thought it was by his power, it was by his strength. He forgot about Simeon. He felt that Simeon was a minority tribe. He forgot about the power of strategic relationships. And look at this, he began to lose. They said they could not drive out the inhabitants of the lowland because they had chariots of iron. The reason why they could not drive out these guys, keep the scripture, it's not because these guys were more powerful than the guys they had conquered. It was because they forgot the power of unity. Go to verse 20. Let's continue. And they gave Hebron to Caleb and you can go and read the rest. This morning I was reading the book of First Kings chapter 13 and 14. Just my normal daily Bible reading. And it was a story of a man called Jeroboam. You remember that when Solomon died, Solomon had a son called Rehoboam. Rehoboam was a spoiled brat. He didn't know much. Solomon did not tutor or mentor him like David did to Solomon. So when Rehoboam ascended the throne, he committed a blunder against Israel and the entire nation turned against him. Now the reason was because a prophet somewhere in the bush had prophesied to a man called Jeroboam. Jeroboam was a servant to Solomon. And Solomon saw how mighty this guy was, industrious he was. Solomon now made him in charge of the labor force. Because Solomon was a very wise guy. Solomon said, if I don't make this guy work with me or under me, this guy may soon rebel because he will have many people that will gather around him. And then a time came when there was crisis and Jeroboam had to run away from Israel. Watch this. Now, when Jeroboam returned, one time he was in the bush and a prophet met him when he was a nobody. The prophet took his clothes, his own clothes, tore it into 12 pieces and gave 10 to Jeroboam. Say, God said he has given you the kingdom of Israel and only one tribe will go to Jeroboam. When he was nobody, he remembered his prophet. But fast forward many years later, when Jeroboam had become king, the power of that position took over his head like some people. When nobody knew them, they were good though, they would call you and check on you and greet you. The moment they entered a position, he became director in CBN. He doesn't know anybody again. You know what? Years later, when Jeroboam sinned against God, turned the whole of Israel into idolatry and God was determined to wipe out Jeroboam and his generation. Jeroboam now took, his son was now sick. That was when he now remembered God. The same God that took him when he was a nobody, when he was a fugitive and made him king. He forgot about God. The same prophet that prophesied to him when he was in the bush. He didn't know anybody. He forgot about the prophet. It was now that his son that will be heir to the throne was sick. He now called his wife. I think you'll find it in 1 Kings chapter 14. He called his wife. He gave her honorarium. He said, go and meet prophet Abijah. Oh, now you remember the prophet. When you became king, we didn't hear the name of the prophet again. Oh, now that everything has gone south, you now remember the prophet. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? May God not allow you to be like that. Some of you are here. There are people, strategic people that God used to help you. As you are finding me listening to me, there are strategic people that God used to help you, forgot about them. Better return back. Do 
Just because the guy is not known on social media, but he had a dream, he told you the interpretation, and when it happened, God made you a millionaire. Now you are forgotten. Go back. If God blesses you on another altar, don't come here and share the testimony. Go there and share the testimony. Give glory to the God of the man of God. I will not take that here. If God blesses you here, if you go outside and share it, you're on your own. But if God blessed you elsewhere, go there and think. When the leper saw that he was healed, he went back to the one. Even though he was a Samaritan and Jesus was a Jew, he went back. Some of you God has used, but because the people are insignificant, you forget about them. Go back. Oh. Go back. Otherwise, things are about to go south for you. When Jeroboam, when everything scattered, that's when he now remembered the prophet. He now told his wife, you know, he wanted to bribe God. He said, take this, take that, go and meet the prophet. Ask him whether my child will be. And you know, the woman now disguised so that the prophet will not know because the prophet was now blind. He was old. He wouldn't have become blind if the king took care of him. This was the person that prophesied to you and you ascended the throne. If the king was wise, he would have kept him around him. Be, be, be my prophet. Be guiding me so I don't go the wrong way like David did. He left the prophet to suffer. Now the prophet was old. He had become blind. He now thought he could use gifts. So when the wife got to the door, she had not even entered. The prophet, though he was blind, but his eyes and the spirit were still open. He mentioned the name of the woman. He said, uh-uh, call me. Why are you disguising a so-so-so person? He said, come, I have bad news for you. Your child will die. And as, in fact, that death is because God loves that child. So God will take that child so that he will not be a part of the disaster that is coming to your family. May God not allow your life to be so. Yeah. You are saying amen like you are not hearing what I am saying. Yeah. May God not allow your life to be so. Yeah. I need to come down and talk to you on this one. Listen, sit down. I need to talk to you on this one. Listen, in the body of Christ, we forget people. Sit down, sit down. We forget people too much. Sit down, don't worry, sit down. God uses somebody to help you because they were insignificant. Then it was when everything had gone south. That's when we now remember the pro You know, when I read it today, it, it struck me. It was just a normal Bible reading, but something shifted in my mind. All the while he was a king, we didn't hear the mention of that prophet's name. Yeah. It was now that things had spoiled. He now remembered the prophet who was now blind. So he left the prophet to suffer. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I will not forget those that God used to help me. Those that God uses for my rising. I will not forget them. Now, I'm giving you an assignment. Go back today. Sit down. Think. Who has God used to contribute to my coming this far? Find a way to honor them. Find a way. Even if it's a text message of gratitude. Some of you, even your parents, you don't even take care of them. Anytime you see their call, you feel they are disturbing you. Really? Do you know how many arrows they have taken for you? Because you speak in tongues and they don't speak in tongues does not mean that your prayer is stronger than them. You, you have tongues, but them, they have been through so much. The pro that's a, is a major problem in the body of Christ. God uses people to help you. God uses people to recommend you, to position you. You rise and you just forget them. No. 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 Even the person that took you to the program where you gave your life to Christ. Now, 10 years later, God, God has blessed you. God is faithful to you. Remember that person. Send them a text message and say, I thank you because you are one of those that God has used to bring me to where I am today. God is the source, but men are channels. Don't despise men. Don't despise men. What are we talking about today? 
Very good. Sit down, write this down. Relationships are the framework or building blocks for the existence of life. Relationships are the framework or building blocks for the existence of life. I want to plead with you, make sure you don't leave this service to the end. I have some important announcements I want to make. Please, make sure you stay to the end. Number one, I said what? Relationships are the framework and building block for the existence of life. Life cannot be meaningful without relationship. Believe me. Number two, relationships are the currency for destiny. The currency of destiny. Relationships are the currency of destiny. Do you know what that means? How many of you will survive without money in this life, in this Nigeria? Frank, how many of you... <laughs> I take all the money from your pocket, from your account. It's as good as just kill me. Is that true? It is with money that you make transactions. Everything in this life goes around based on money. Isn't it? Now, relationships are the currency for destiny. That means the transaction of one destiny to another and the fulfillment of destinies in the kingdom is on the strength of relationship you needed a relationship to be born you will need a relationship to get to where you are going to when you leave this hall you don't have a car like myself blessed be the name of god you have legged this bends leg yourself to the junction you will need the relationship of a tricycle operator or a taxi to take you home whether you like him or not is that true even if you have a car one day you will need fuel you will need the relationship of a fuel attendant in a village station. Is that true? The currency of destiny is relationship. Everything evolves around it. You take relationship out, forget about destiny. Number three, everything thrives on the sustainability of relationships. Everything thrives on the sustainability of relationships. Emphasis on the word sustainability. Because a lot of people have a problem with keeping relationship. How many of you have relationships you have kept for at least five years without punching the person's jaw or without slandering or gossiping the person? Or hurting the person? Some of you, if you don't fight in a month, something is wrong with you. They will need to diagnose you. You have fever. And some of you have even said, yeah, now so me I be, oh, now so me I, I go fight I, with a fight. Later we go settle. But you are hurting the person. What's the point of number three? Everything thrives on the sustainability. If I need to wear this shoe to move from this point to this point, huh? that means the shoes will need to remain on my feet for as long as that distance. Is that true? So it is on the sustainability of the relationships that God brings around your life that you will thrive. Some relationships come into your life for a moment. Some for a season. Some for a lifetime. Be careful with the ones that come for a season and for a lifetime. Be careful with those ones. Because you will need, you will need to learn the principle of sustaining relationships. That's when you will know that. You, do you, have you heard people who say, eh, the truth is bitter, the truth is raw? Have you heard that? It's because of how you said it. It's because of the way you said the truth. That's why it's bitter. Because the Bible says, but speaking the truth in love. That's when you know that you, you just, someone say, and me and Asomi are there. I go just talk and like that. When I talk, finish, you don't come out and you lose a destiny relationship. Learn how to padlock that your mouth. Do you know why they put zip on clothes, on bags? So that you can regulate the amount of opening or closing. Mm, just keep talking, I'm as a day. If I talk, I don't come out. 
no worry. Lose and help her and then return back to poverty successfully and may God be with you. Truth is bitter because of the way you said it. Yes, it's because of the way. I just realized it recently. You don't say anything anyhow. No. You will need to know how to talk. You will need to know how to talk to your adversaries, to your acquaintances, to your friends, to your helpers. Because everything thrives on the sustainability of relationship. God will deliver us this day. Yes. Some of you, your social skills will improve after this service. Number four. Relationship is God's strategy for the actualization and fulfillment of divine purpose. Let me go again. Relationship is God's strategy. God bless those of us that are writing. And God help those of us that are not writing. Before you say, I didn't pray for you. Even this one now can make somebody beef me. Say, eh, he only bless those who are... Ah, what's your problem? Relationship is God's strategy for the actualization and fulfillment of divine purpose. For the actualization and fulfillment of divine purpose. Relationship is God's strategy. God's purpose was to have sole dominion over the earth that he had created. So what did he do? Genesis 1, 27 and 28. He created man in his image. In the image of God created he them, male and female. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. It was God that wanted to reign over the earth that he had created. But he couldn't do it because he is spirit. And the earth he created is material, is physical. So he created a representative through whom he will exert his dominion. Now God knew that from that day, he had to be in a constant relationship with man. So that he can have a grip on the earth that he created for himself. Even though the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, he must partner with man to sustain his grip of control and dominion on the earth. So what did God do? He began to provide for the man. Look at verse 30 and 31 of Genesis chapter 1. God ensured that he created, he, he created room for that man that he had created to exist and to thrive. Look at this. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the earth, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given. I have given every green help for food, and it was so. So even the animals that God created, he created a relationship with the plants, the grass, the vegetation, so that they can survive. Both need each other to survive. When animals breathe out, what they release, the gaseous exchange as a waste product is CO2, carbon dioxide. Is that true? What they release as a waste is what the plants take in to live. So there is a relationship between the animals and vegetation. There's a relationship between man and his environment. For you to have a thriving ecosystem where everybody, whether man or animal or plant, are growing and fulfilling their purpose, there has to be a relationship. Someone say relationship. That's why I said relationship is God's strategy for the actualization and fulfillment. What will make a plant grow is when you add water, sunlight, and most times manure. That manure is the waste from an animal. That manure is the waste from a human being. But a plant needs it to grow and to thrive. So for all of us to fulfill our God-ordained purpose, we need each other to thrive. Imagine if this whole world were without vegetation. I hope you know we are in trouble. Give us verse 31 of Genesis 1. Quickly. Then God saw everything that he, he had made and indeed it was very good. It was the relationship that God saw thriving within his creation that he called good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth 
day. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, God said it's not good that a man should be alone. He needs a relationship. Verse 24, the Bible says a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Relationship. Is that true? In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, God began to curse the serpent. He said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Because of a distortion in relationship, that's why we are at war against Satan till today. And it was mentioned in this verse. So the curse that came in the Garden of Eden was on relationship. Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1. The Bible says that men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. And the sons of God, the fallen angels, came and slept with these daughters and produced another breed, uh, another species. They were not human beings. They were more than human beings. What did God do? He had to destroy the whole earth. But before God destroyed the earth, he had a relationship with one man called Noah. And through that one man, God preserved the race of humans. So you now see that the real people that God wanted to destroy were the people that were either the breed of the serpent or that were under the influence of the breed of the serpent. This part of the message is not for everybody. It's for a few people who, whose minds are deep in thinking. So God established a relationship with a genuine human race that was not adulterated by the seed of the serpent before he destroyed everyone from the face of the earth. Everything thrives on relationship. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul began to talk to us about the last days. He was warning Timothy from verse 1 to verse 8. Paul told Timothy, he said, In the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves. Can you give us in King James Version? He said, men will be lovers of their own selves. This is the enemy of relationship, self. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous. Some of you are thinking this is a group of people. So, no, sometimes if you check our lives, it's one character is involved. Some of us are victim of one or more of these virtues. Let's go on. Disobedient to parents. Are you seeing that? An attack on relationships in the last days, which we are living in now. In fact, when I said that disobedient to brother, somebody you had a fight with one of your parents this week. Repent and see me after the service. This one is, pro I'm prophesying now. You had a fight with one of your parents this week. Repent and see me after the service. I need to pray for you. Because of that fight, there's a door that has been opened and the enemy has entered your life. But you don't know because nothing has happened. Repent and see me after the service. Or wave it off. And you have yourself to be blamed. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. When you are unthankful, you will lose relationship. Let's go on. Without natural affection. Truth breakers. Do you see that word? Truth breakers, they are skillful in dividing relationships. Or you have an agreement with them and they will break it. It means that they don't keep their word. It means that they can't keep covenant. And it's covenant that is the environment for re good relationships to thrive. The Bible says in the last days we will have truth breakers. You have to beware of what I call the spirit of Leviathan in the last days. And I will explain what Leviathan is. Now in Job chapter 41, Job spoke about a creature, a monster called Leviathan or Leviathan. And, and this creature was used symbolically to describe the devil in the Old Testament. L-E-V-I-A-T-H-A-N. Leviathan. 
One of the things that he spoke about this creature called Leviathan in verse Job chapter 41 verse 4 and then verse 15 to 16. The Bible says he can't keep covenant. Look at it in Job chapter 41. Will he make a covenant with thee? That means are you sure that you can agree with the devil and he will stay true to his part? No. Now this spirit of Leviathan is at work in a lot of people in the last days. That's why many people find it difficult to keep relationship. They find it difficult to maintain covenant. And I'm going to explain what covenant really is so you really will understand. Let's go to verse 15 and 16. He said, Will thou play with him as with a bed? Or will thou bind him for thy maidens? That means you can't play with him. Shall the companions make... No, verse 15 and 16. Mm-hmm. One is so near to another. Go to 15. Can I, do we need to lay hands on the person on this? I hope you are not thinking about your girlfriend or boyfriend regardless. God bless you. <laughs> Somebody say relationship. Did they text you that you, did your girlfriend text you that she has broken up with you? I'm just joking. He's describing that creature, Levata. He said his scales on his skin like a crocodile are his pride. They are shut up together as with a closed seal. That means this is a proud creature. And this is a spirit that will rule in the last day. Pride. And this is one of the, one of the characters that fight relationship. Pride. Do you know why small fight that two people have for three years, they are not seeing eye to eye? It's because they are both too proud to come down and say, I am sorry. Is the spirit of Leviathan. Let's continue. He said, one is so near to another that no air, another word for air is wind or spirit, can come in between them. Pride makes you resistant to the flow of the spirit. You didn't catch that. Let's, one more verse. Verse 34. He says, he beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. And as long as you hold on to your pride, you will never keep relationship around you. At best, you will have people who just tolerate you, waiting for the day God will take them out of that toxic relationship of your life and give them good people. Don't worry, when I speak like this, I'm, I'm casting out some demons. By the time you become uncomfortable with the truth, it's deliverance that is coming. Beware of the spirit of Leviathan in the last days. Selfish people cannot keep covenant. Selfish people, they love themselves. All about me. Nobody can handle me. The anointing of my life makes me different and special. Have you even seen people who they try to even justify their anger and say it's, it's the anointing? Say, we are prophets. Prophets are always angry people. It's a lie. There's nothing like that. The anointing, will never, with the anointing will never support a bad character. A bad character is a bad character any day, any time, regardless of who. Whether you are a prophet or a CEO, whether you are an apostle or a businessman, a bad character is a bad character. Say, that's how I am. That's how God made me. No, it's not the way God made you. It's the flesh that made you like that. Selfish people can't keep covenant. For two years, you are fighting with the person. You have not said sorry. Why? Selfish. Every time you consider self, you can't keep relationship. Covenant demands that you die to what you need so that you can supply the other person with what they need. That's covenant. And you see that in the life of Jonathan. 1 Samuel chapter 18. Now, I told you two Sundays ago, about Jonathan, that before David came on board, Jonathan was already a mighty warrior. He had brought victory to Israel at one time. So obviously he was the only one in his ranking of soldiers in Israel. Now, when David came and killed Goliath, Jonathan would have become like Paul, like Saul, his father. He would have been selfish and said, who is this one that is trying to stop my child? Because you know, it's not easy 
to monopolize a spot for a long time and then someone else is coming to take that to share that spot with you it's not easy to still embrace them you will need to die to self for you not to be threatened by others be other people's success is a sign that you are not selfish and there's no need to be threatened by other people's success. We can all succeed and thrive at the same time. That the Adeboye is there. That the Kumuyi is there. Dr. Olukoya is there. Which other one? Um, the Lord's choosing. Pastor Chris. All these guys with their mega congregations and nobody is nobody's pulling down the other person. It's people that don't have what they have that is trying to pull them down. The sky is so large that every star can shine and none will compete. No. Jonathan was a man of covenant. First Samuel chapter 18. First Samuel chapter 18. Now when he finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Go on. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. But look at Jonathan. He said, then Jonathan and David made a covenant. Jonathan was a man that understood covenant. He was not threatened by, keep the scripture. He was not threatened by uh, uh, David's exploit. That now everybody's chanting David's name, not my name. No. He was a wise man. If it's no longer my name again, what I can do is identify with the one. If you stand near a light, everybody will see you and the light. It's a simple thing. You may not be successful, but you have a very successful friend. They will say the friend of... Everybody has their space. That was the wisdom of Jonathan. He made a covenant with David. He said, oh boy, now you the reign now. The Bible says he made a covenant with him because he loved him with his own soul. Give us verse 4. And Jonathan took off the robe. Oh my God. Now this was a sign that warriors did in those days. A sign of respect and loyalty from a, a soldier to a higher soldier. They would take off their robe and give it to the person as a symbol of their respect and their honor and acknowledgement of that person or they would take off their armor now look at jonathan he took off his robe his armor even to his sword and his own bow and belt if jonathan was existing now they would say oh there mumu nobody you be king picking this guy you don't know where he came from but jonathan what self will not allow you to see the future People that you should, God is about to lift this guy, be a part of his success story so that you will be remembered. To selfishness. Some of you now, some people are calling you from the village. Now, where God don't bless you. But where were they when you were struggling? You know what you owe them? One phone call in three months and send support once in a while. Yes, don't bring them close. If they didn't contribute to the success, don't bring them. They may just damage it. Honor them from far. Support them if you can. Don't tell them what you do to make money. Are you getting wisdom? You say, eh, hey, now my person, now my tribal person, now tribal, now, now who know man, they kill man. Be wise. Be wise. Last time you went to a, a village or you went for a wedding of one of your relatives, you are a big girl now. You are not married, but look at the kind of money you are controlling. Your uncles, one of them came around and said, Ah, when they born you, now me carry your mama for by God in a lie. They have seen the hand of God on your life. They were wishing that you would fail. Now that you didn't fail, you succeeded beyond, beyond what they imagined. They want to be part of. No, if you didn't contribute to my rising, there's no way you contribute to my being sustained in rising. You'll be a predator. What you did not fight or what you did not, you know, cooperate together with to build, you cannot help to sustain. Some of you are, bring, you are bringing those people into, hey, it's my uncle's son. Is it by force that your relatives must stay in your house? 
I didn't say it's wrong. I just said, is it by force? Are you here? If you are with me, say amen. amen. Jonathan was a wise man. First Samuel chapter 20, verse 14 to 17. Jonathan made a covenant with David. He said, and you shall not only show me the kindness of the Lord. This is what he told David. He said, see, I know that now you now will be king. I'm just a prince, but the hand of God is on you. He said, swear to me that you will show me kindness. You will remember me. He said that you will not only show me kindness of the Lord while I'm alive. Go to the next verse. Even when I die, you will not cut off kindness from my house because this one way, my father, I won't kill you. When you become killed, it's just for you to just say, oh yeah, destroy everybody in the house of Saul. But Jonathan saw, he was not selfish and because of his open heart, he preserved his dynasty. Do you know that many years later, there was famine in Israel. And when David asked the Lord why this famine came, God said it was because of the house of Saul. Saul killed the Gibeonites and you were not supposed to kill the Gibeonites because the Gibeonites made a covenant with Israel. So because Saul broke that covenant and visited Israel with anger, David said, how do we do it? He said, go to the Gibeonites. They, he went to the Gibeonites. The Gibeonites said, okay, give us everybody in the house of Saul. Let's kill them so that we'll avenge our anger. The Bible says he gave them seven sons but he spared the son of Jonathan. Covenant. May you be wise enough to build strategic relationships that will benefit your children, your children, children, and even your fourth generation. Some of us, do you know why you are where you are in life now? You are poor. Or you are suffering. It's not because you have not seen money. Remember when your father used to be a friend to the governor. Then he was not governor. Then he was secretary to the state government. If only your father had kept that relationship, you would not be struggling today. Your father was a friend when they were in level 7 in federal civil service together. The man was a non-entity. Nobody owed. He was your father's friend. Your father used to give him food in the office. But your father didn't build the relationship. When the guy entered politics, your father said, nah, politicians are dirty people. I don't like them. I don't like them. Now the guy is a senator. You see the carelessness of one generation costing the other generation. I'm praying for you. May God give you wisdom to build strategic relationships that will benefit your generations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are not supposed to be looking for a job. It's one call that should give you that job. When the person, ah, this guy is the chairman senate committee on finance. And you are looking for a job in ministry of finance. You are not going, you have been screened. You have been screened. It's just to call the minister of finance, eh? Oh boy. She will get me to it next week, eh? Say, hey, one of my sons, one of my sons, one of my nephew, yeah, give him a job. What's his name, sir? So, so, and so, person. And because the minister does not want them to broke all the money that he has stolen, he said, no, we'll, we'll take care of you, we'll give him a job. Then they now move you. You start at level 11. When your mate start at level 7. It's called relationship, strategic relationship. Don't behave like your parents, some of you, not all. Some of you had wise parents. Some of you, your parents were wise. They built strategic relationships. But those ones that were not, don't behave like them. What kind of a life is that, that when you are angry, nobody talks to you? When you are depressed, you off your phone and stay in the house. Why are you killing yourself while you are alive? There must be somebody that can talk to you in any state that you are in. Will depression give you food? Zing, I'm, not, I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood. You better be in the mood. Hunger will kill you. Hunger will kill you. <laughs> Even depressed people know, know better when there is hunger. 
Mashallah na malala. Let me tell you something. Last year, we were to go for Pastor Prince's introduction. So we were to stop by in Yola and then we will continue the journey from Yola to, uh, to Lhasa through Uber. Well, you know, my brother married from uh, the Margit tribe. Wonderful tribe. Amen. So, wonderful people. Wonderful people. Amen. So, when we got to Yola, my father was to fly in from Abuja. The power of strategic relationship. A woman who had been introduced to me two years ago, two years to that date, every time she will call me, I even got tired of her call sometimes. To be honest, she may even be watching this program now. But I love you. Because this problem, that problem, but I never complain. I will listen to her. And sometimes you can be on that phone listening 24 minutes to five. That's why if as a man of, if, if I don't pick your call, please don't be offended. You don't know what we go through. You don't know what we go through. Just this few number that we have here because everybody didn't call. Count this number. If I decide to give one hour to each of you every day, two months will pass. I would not have covered it. So, but I kept the relationship and all of that and I never asked her for money or anything. So, you see, when, when you are good to people and you don't look to getting from them, they will always feel the need to repay. Guess what? Her husband was the airport commandant of Yola International Airport. First time my father would fly to Yola, he was received like a president. The plane stopped. The man and his security team, when nobody came down, they went into the plane, took my father, welcomed him, red carpet, and they didn't follow the normal, took him to the VIP lodge. Why? Because he had a son who had built a relationship with somebody who was married to. Relationship. When he was to travel back, you remember, sir, you left that Friday morning. My father was in the restaurant in the hotel where we were. He was there drinking coffee. They brought a helix with a soldier to carry him. We didn't know that while we were discussing, the plane had been grounded. How many minutes? Over 30 minutes, they kept the plane. Why? Because one man was yet to come to the airport. Maybe the people in that plane were even richer than him, but because of relationship. Maybe there were members of government in the plane, but because of relationship. You are here playing with friends anyhow. And you will need discernment to look at people who will be something tomorrow. You will need discernment. Some may not look like it now. I think if I stop the message here, I've done a lot of justice. I can stop the message and we'll just pray because <laughs> some of us, are, we just realize the mistakes we have made and some of us are also grateful for some wise principles that you have applied. Relationship. So pride and self are destroyers of destiny relationships. Pride and self. No matter what you do, ensure that you don't have these two things in your life. Pride and self are destroyers of destiny relationships. But covenant is the right attitude for building long-lasting relationship. Long-lasting strategic relationship. It takes the attitude of covenant. 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 Even when the person displays their weakness, even when they misbehave and they receive public outcry, will you stand with them? Your friend is caught up in a scandal and you know him not to be a very bad person, but he made a mistake and is caught up in the mess. You leave him like every other person. Job said there is hope for a tree. Though it is cut down, but if the stump remain in there, that person, as long as they are alive, don't give up on them. Every time a man faces rejection, he, is, he, he gets divine attraction for divine elevation. I don't know why, but God seems to be attracted to rejected people. You leave him like other people. 
Say that my uncle, nobody they call him because not drunkard. But that's the richest person in the family. He's a drunkard, but today if you are in a mess of 500,000 and you pick one call, he won't even ask you how. Send your account number and boom. He's a drunkard. Learn to, learn to, learn to, learn to <laughs> inhale the drink. And <laughs> in there, it's called covenant. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you like what he's doing, but keep it. And it's just not just because of what you will gain. It's covenant. This world now is filled with all kinds of truth breakers and betrayers. We have few people that understand covenant. I will stand with you no matter what. Look at Ruth. Your people shall be my people. Your God. She's talking to a fugitive. A woman that has no hope. She left her, her homeland to another country. Lost her sons and her husband. Came back broke and dejected. There's no hope. She's already old. This one is the day she will fall down and just die of stroke. Or maybe die of paralysis or something because of too much thinking. Is there any hope in this one? Ruth, a full-fledged young woman. Say, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where you die, they go bury me put. And that rejected old woman became the ticket to Ruth having a great husband. In fact, many of, the, many of Ruth's contemporaries never had the kind of husband she had because Boaz was an old man, but the wealth he had, 10 guys, two together, don't have it. He was the one that employed the young men that she was working with. He asked one of them, say, so some, <laughs> well, if, are you hearing what I'm saying? Covenant. Hold somebody's hand by your side. And in, in the next one minute, begin to pray for that person. Pray for that person. Forget about yourself. Speak words over that person. You may not know them, but you are all in the household of faith. That person is your covenant brother or sister in Christ Jesus. Hold that person and begin to pray for them. Prophesy to them. Prophesy. Speak over their life. May the shield of God defend you. May God be with you by day and by night. May the sun not smite you. May the grace of God keep you. May God raise helpers for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Write this down. Avoid the following people or avoid people with the following attitude. What did I say? Avoid. Avoid them. Anyone you find with this attitude. Number one, pride. Number two, selfishness. Why do you have a selfish friend? Selfishness. Avoid them. Number three, greed or conversiousness. Do you know there's a difference between greed and selfishness? Mm. Selfishness is like the mother of greed. Greed is an insatiable appetite for more. Even if that more means betraying a friend. So long as I have more. I told you the story here of one of our brothers. He's in Abuja now. God has blessed him with a bigger job. When he was here working in Meduguri, there was a position in his office. And him and another Christian guy were the most qualified for the position. So it's like they wanted to play office politics and make them fight each other. You know what he did? He went to the guy and said, come, two of us are believers. We can't fight for the position. Whoever is there does not matter as long as it is somebody from the light, somebody from the kingdom. I'm not applying for the position. Apply and get it. We need somebody there. Today is working with the federal government in Abuja. Richard. Ah! If not some people, Jesus Christ. God of Elijah, send down fire. Send, wait, wait. Send down fire on who? On your fellow brother. What is it about the pay? You will still be in need if you were earning five million. 
500,000, 50,000, 5,000, you will still be in need. Greed. An insatiable appetite for more, even if it means betray my brother. Even if it means fight my brother. Some of you are CEOs and bosses in your office and you have to repent from that attitude of people are fighting your organization and instead of you to bring peace between them and make them respect each other, you allow them because when two people are fighting, each will run to you to come and confide in you. You know, that's if you read 48 laws of power, that's one of the laws there. Now, as long as two of them will be coming to you individually, you have their loyalty. So because you are, you are so sick of getting the loyalty of your subordinates, not knowing that you should end it, respect is end. You don't force it from them. Let them see Christian virtues in your life as a CEO. The Bible wrote about how masters should behave. Read the book of Colossians chapter 4. Read Ephesians chapter 6. It wrote about how masters should behave. He said, treat them as though you are one of them because you serve the Lord Christ. You too are a servant to another person. But no, because all of them will be loyal to you. You want to be getting gist from it. You know, some bosses, some CEOs, they are so gossip. They are so in need of gossip. They, they love, they, are, they have itchy ears to gossip that they don't mind everybody's attacking everybody. And it's your organization that is going down. You are a boss or you are, you, are, you are a senior officer and you have two officers under you fighting each other. Worst of all, they are believers. Call them to your office tomorrow morning and sit them down. Say, why, why do we continue like this? 6,000 demons are united in one man. No fight. But two believers cannot thrive in one office that God sent the two of them to dominate. dominate. He said, let them, not him, let them have dominion. You want that it's only you that is there so that you can get all the money. Run away from greedy people. Run away. Run away. Scan your life from this night. Run away from them. They, because these people hardly change. The time you should have used praying for other things, you are praying that they will change. Continue. Till their greed destroys you. But God will preserve you. Amen. Number four, envy. People with the attitude of envy, run away. Number five, lies. Liars. Ah! Some people can lie that the devil needs to apply for distance learning in their institution. Distance learning. You know the devil is busy walking to and fro the earth, so he can't, he can't do a usual program. He needs to do distance learning. Some, some, some believers can lie. They can even open a university, a, an open university of that. What? They can skillfully lie to six people and the six of them will not know. Run away from those people. Once you find somebody that can change their world, they can't stand by their world. You are a gentleman. You want, this is the lady you want to marry. And her ye is not her ye. Her no is not her no. She said something yesterday. Today she's saying another thing. Who, who bewitched you? And you say you love her. Is the will of God? Is the will of God the, the ten naira to hellfire? Because when you stay with that kind of person, you stand naira to hellfire. Says the will of God. I, I, I love her. She will change. Let I help your life, oh. Lies. Any relationship where you find the person into lying. If you have spoken the, to the person, the person doesn't change. You call somebody that you both respect and the person, run away. One day you'll be a victim of that lie. And see, some kind of disaster saying, eh? rising from it is difficult. Some of you say, you say, in say. I hear her say, you say, she been say, them say. Ah. Omba toko sayada. The Bible says flee. Number six, immoral people. There are some people that are so sick with immorality that the best thing to do with them is to stay as far from them as the east is from the west. Intercede from a distance. Ladies, 
There are some guys you need to be careful with. All your friends you are introducing to them. You will just discover one day that they've slept with everybody apart from you. While they are waiting for the wedding date, they are warming themselves up. And even the foolish friends are not bold enough to come to you and to confess. The Bible says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Those of us that are not married, please don't marry an immoral person. Marriage does not cure immorality. It doesn't. It doesn't. Run away from them. Immorality has destroyed families, destroyed relationships. What did Absalom, uh, what happened to the house of David? A, a man loved his half-sister, did everything to sleep with her. He was so blinded by his lust, he forgot it was his sister. He even forgot that they were children of the king. It would be a disgrace in Israel. And then it opened a plethora of problems. He was killed by the, the brother of that, guy, that lady. And then that brother unseated the king from the throne, slept with the king's concubines. Run away from immoral people. You are a pastor, you are a minister. Be careful the people you counsel. Build boundaries around you. Build boundaries. A businessman can sleep around and nothing happens to him. But your integrity is in your call. It's not everybody that you must counsel. Hand them over to your wife sometimes. Or at best, hand them over to somebody. You are so compassionate. You want to sit down in private with everybody. Go and privatize with Jezebel. Please. And if you're already married and the person is immoral, you need help from God. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Yes, sir. I said, avoid the people with the following attitude. Number one, pride. Number two, selfishness. Number three, greed and covetousness. Number four, envy. Number five, lies. Number six, immorality. Number seven, sins of the heart. I call them sins of the heart. What are those? Miles. Hatred. Anger. Bitterness. Those days in secondary school, you used to have a young man, if he's angry, he can jack anything and throw. He can stone you anything. Maybe he can even carry the whole hostel, the block, and stone you. One day he was so angry, he took an iron bucket filled with water and clothes. Do you know how heavy that would be? He took it with one hand and hauled it against somebody. The person had to dodge. That's somebody's father you want to dismember. What kind of that's that's demonic that's not anger and as a lady he slapped you the first time he says the sleep of hand it will soon be a sleep of your life and you too as a lady control your mouth uh, because sometimes the reason why the hand of the guys are, are, are moving like that is because of your mouth so there should be a balance. Ah, but you see him display anger like that. You are still with him. What are you doing with that cousin of the devil? It's not me. The Bible says anger lies in the bosom of who? A fool. Sins of the heart. Bitterness. For 10 years, two families are against each other. Why? Because two mothers are bitter towards each other. Then they poison their children. And those children now hate one another and poison their children. And you see how two families can be separated generation after generation because of two embittered women. What is so bad that was done to you that you can't forgive? Bitterness. Even in church. Some people will not come to church because they are bitter towards the man of God. They are bitter is it heaven that we want to go to? I mean, I'm not saying I'm the most perfect, but sometimes when you see these kind of things, in, you are, is it the same heaven we will go to? Or there's a heaven where they allow bitter people, people of miles. 
May God deliver us. God is purging us this night too. Malice, hatred, anger, bitterness, evil, evil speakings. Those are what I call the sins of the heart. Evil speakings. Speak evil of people. Speak bad of people. Avoid those people. Avoid them. Avoid them. We call them bad mouth, isn't it? They're saying a joke. We joke. Bad mouth. You can read Ephesians 4.31 and Galatians 5.17. 19 to 21 when you get home strategic relationships to build if you must do exploits what are the strategic relationships you must build if you must do exploit let me rush in five minutes and we'll pray number one you must build these relationships if you want to do exploit in life number one relationship with god non-negotiable not forget about I'm an atheist. And well, I hope you keep your confession when you see hellfire face to face. I don't believe in God. I don't believe. May God help America and the Western nations. You want to do exploit in this life? You must have a solid relationship. I'm not saying you'll be perfect. I'm saying you must have a solid relationship. Relationship is a perfect union between two imperfect people you'll tolerate yourself you celebrate yourself nothing must joke with your relationship with god number two relationship with family very important relationship with family means with your spouse with your children with your parents your uncles your aunties you must trust God to sustain the wisdom to build this relationship. Family is important and it plays an integral role in success. May your wife know happy with you. Let's see how productive you will be. I've, I've interviewed a lot of married men and it seemed, to, it seemed to be that when their wives begin to complain, there's fire on the mountain. They do everything to make sure madam stops complaining. And I'm, now I'm not telling you young ladies that are about to marry. Say, oh, okay, that's the secret. If I complain well, well, you will hear me. You will just destroy your marriage. You will complain him to another woman. No, it's true. And now that he, he has money, you know that he, didn't, he, he has money, you are marrying him. Ah, but you just camp one lady somewhere and buy DSTV and flat screen and mess these bands for her. Hmm. So create peace in your home. You are young, you never marry, you never marry. Learn to keep, learn to build peace around you. Now that you and your, your fiancé cannot do without quarreling in a week, how sure am I that you will live in a happy and a peaceful home? Family, very, very important. Family, don't sacrifice family because of destiny. No, carry them along. Carry them along. Do you know why some children of pastors hate God or hate pastoral calling or hate ministry? It's because they suffered because their father wanted to love God and serve God. Their father took their school fees and put in church building and their mate went ahead of them. Or their father took the food from their table and gave it to people else, outsiders who betrayed them later. So the, the guy is now a young thriving businessman. He, has, he doesn't want to have anything to do with God. But if you, are a, if, if you are a parent and you have a child like that, I pray that God will restore them. Amen. Don't sacrifice your family for destiny. No. Family is important. Make sacrifices for them, not with them. I agree that there are instructions God will give to us and all of us will have to inconvenience, but ensure you explain to them till they understand. You are a husband. God tells you, give me all your salary in the month of July. Don't force it on your wife. Sit, put a seat with her. Sit down with her and say, honey, this is what God said. What are you saying? If she say no, can I teach you something? I will be, I will be punished or criticized for this. But I hope I know that I'm speaking by the basis of on the basis of scripture. If God asks you to do something and your wife refuses, don't do it. Until she agrees. Brother Manga, did you hear me? I'm using you as an example. 
there's nothing. I just, I just called you randomly. If God asks you to do something and your husband refuses, even if you you be prophetess for your area, you they speak in tongues, you they gather women for prayers. Your husband goes to the bar and comes back. If he says no, he has authority over you. Delay it until he agrees. Go back to God and say, God, the woman you gave me, say, man, no grill, convict her. And then while you are praying, God will convict her to agree. But God say, give me all your salary. You just carry it and give God. Bah! Or like a woman. You just carry all your salary and give man of God. Hey, man of God, bless me. Then you now go back and your husband gives you a dirty slap. If you come back, I'll send you back to him. Go and beg him. Cook yam porridge. Go and beg him. Really? The two shall become one. You don't make decisions like that on your own. If it is your shirt you want to give out, no problem. But you want to give out your whole salary and you know that your family is dependent on that salary? Come on, be wise. Even Jesus had respect for family that the, the first miracle he performed was influenced by family. His mother went to him and said there was no wine. Family is important. Don't you ever, don't you ever. Husband, wife, children, we all have the responsibility of maintaining peace in our home. If we have peaceful families, we will have a growing church and a peaceful society. The reason why the country is like this is because families are quarreling. There is fight. And then the economy adds to it. Maintain peace. Maintain peace. If you need to be a fool for peace to bring, be a fool and talk to God. Uh, because you must not be a fool forever. Be a fool, but talk to God. Apostle, what if the man is beating me every day? For you to maintain peace in that kind of a home, run away. Yes, because when you run away, the beating will stop. When the uh, beast becomes a man, go back. I hope. I hope we are balancing this thing. Uh, no, no, no. When it has gotten to physical abuse, please maintain peace by running away. Run away. When it's when he doesn't see you, I think he will slap his wardrobe. Slap. And if you are a man, you are physically abusing women. You are less than a man. You are less than a man. I'm sorry. You are less than a man. Go and find your mates, your fellow men. Go to the gym and go and box. Since you like boxing, go to the gym. When you see somebody's muscle, you'll come back and be a good husband. Amen. I hope you know I'm not just preaching to you alone. There are a lot of people following online with different kind of issues. And there are people who hear these messages in 5-10 years from now. And so that's why it's like this, because I'm speaking to many people. If it is still verbal abuse, all of those things, uh, hey, there's a way you can go about But by the time it has gotten to physical, please, run away. Don't come to my house. Run to Pastor Henry's house or Bishop's house. <laughs> or run to Pastor Prince's house. His wife can cook. You'll be well fed. Why we are sorting the issue? And if you're a man and I catch you, beat your wife, now me go carry you go police station. You're not going to know. It's me. You will not know because I will not be there. It's one call. You will, after two days, I'll visit you. The Bible says after two days, he shall revive us. And on the third day, <laughs> after two days, I'll visit you. Uh, and I will, tell, I will tell the IPO or the DPO, please give him a sound beating. Drive out that demon before I come. Counseling is in different stage. When a man decides to be a beast, you treat him like that. Uh, before I come, they would have sanitized your mind. Then I will come and sympathize with you, give you food and bail you out. But now me carry you go there, you know, go no. And I don't, I'm not joking, I mean it. If I hear you are here, you are a man, even if you are as old as my father, I will say, I'll take you to jail. Yes. Because yeah, I'm your father in the Lord. Uh, if I catch you, Better you come and report. Uh -huh. They will know how to handle the woman. If I catch you beat, we'll take you to human rights. Then we'll settle the case here and bring you back. By that time, you would have been sanitized. You will not be so in Jesus' name. 
So strategic relationships to build if you must do exploits. Please be seated. Five more minutes and we are done. Number one, with God. Number two, with family. Number three, with people. With people. Hebrews chapter 12. Give us that verse. It says, follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man will see the Lord. Build your relationship with people, with friends, with acquaintances, with colleagues, with schoolmates, even with your enemies. There's a kind of relationship to build with them. You can use them to your advantage. Number four, with destiny help us. Ah, this one is very important too. With destiny help us. But if the destiny helper now becomes a predator or a parasite to your life, if the destiny helper is now forcing you to do things that are not godly, take off like a tornado. Take off. Run. You are a young girl in university and destiny helper is giving you money. Now he's saying, meet me in the hotel. Hotel fire. Send him back the last money he sent you. If you, if you don't have it, au revoir. God will not hold you for eating it. Huh? If, if he has been making advances to you and you have been collecting his money, then you are, you are going to share in the wala. But if you have been collecting the money innocently, thinking he's a destiny helper now, he say, meet me in Pinnacle. Meet me in Transcorp. Meet me in uh, Hebrew Hotel in Abuja. And you are going, you want to carry your two legs and other boat and go to your destruction. Amen. Run away. Oh. Destiny help us. Learn to build strategic relationships. Know how to speak to your destiny helper. Know how to communicate with them. It's, destiny helper is not just somebody giving you money. There are some people that their recommendation is greater than money. They need to just make somebody like you and that is it. Some are skillful people. From the day they came into your life, they made your life easy. And you want to let them go? I was told of a big man of God in this country who one of his sons was very good with music. And one time, some people wanted to offer the guy money and take him away from the man of God. The man of God called the guy and gave him times two of the money. He said, stay. Times two, say stay. Tens of millions that time. Take, just stay. All right? There are some destiny helpers that are burden bearers. They don't give you money. They don't give you nothing. But when you are going through pains, these are the only people with you. When you are alone in the midst of adversity, they are the only ones that will pray with you. When they took you to prison and you were there, they are the only ones that visited you. Will you be so foolish to leave them like that? They can't buy those ones. Find a belt and tie your, your waist with them. How many of you know Shehu Musa Yaradua? Okay, you know Umar Musa Yaradua, right? His brother, the general, Shehu, late Shehu Musa Yaradua, was very close to uh, Chief Olushago Basanjo, former president. And you know, during the military time, the Abacha period, they were arrested and termed as school plotters. You know all, all that story. They were in jail and all of that. But because of the relationship between Obasanjo and Shehu, Yaradwa, different tribes, different religion, years later, Yaradwa had died. Obasanjo had done his second tenure. He was about to step down. Who are you going to appoint to lead the party? He said, look for the brother of my friend. Covenant relationship. People. And so many things happening in politics still today. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Destiny help us. Build a relationship with them. Number five. In fact, one of the things to do to your destiny help us, pray for them. Because if they crash, you are in trouble. You just collect free money and pray for them. Oh. Pray for them. Number, what now? Five. A relationship with yourself. You want to do exploit? 
You must build a good relationship with yourself, your spirit, your soul, your body. Starve your body. Don't give it food and proper care. And let me see how far you will go in destiny. You are fasting now. Your ulcer symptoms has resurrected again. Stop that fast and go and eat. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is that Elizabeth? Are you hearing me? All these my spiritual people. Stop that fast. I'm not saying that. I'm just calling names randomly. Go and eat. Pamper your body for one mood. Don't feel bad. Eat. Give it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Drink water. I know you don't like it. You will get used to it. Adaptability is part of human nature. Eat. Find rest. Pray. Don't fast. God will still hear you. Because you will punish it later. Some of you don't sleep appropriately. You are doing vigil every night. What is wrong with you? Am I saying don't pray? Pray. But that's why Jesus is interceding in heaven. So that you can rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Maintain a good relationship with yourself. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul. Some of you don't even take care of your mental health. You are listening to everything. You will soon, you will soon become traumatic psychologically. Take care of yourself. When your body is giving you signs, learn to listen to it. When your spirit is weak, learn to go into the place of prayer and refire it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you die, how will you succeed? How will you do the exploits? Some of us pastors, even when we are sick, we want to still see people. You want to pray in a lie. You can't, you can't kill yourself for people. Jesus died. Don't die again. Your name will be forgotten. Because you died out of stress, out of ulcer, out of... Jesus has died. Even, even with the death of Jesus, some people will not believe in him. Who told you that they will believe in you if you die? They'll look for the next man of God. Take care of yourself. Everywhere you are, everywhere for everybody. What? You can't say no. You want to, you want to do, do it... I hope you know Jesus died premature. Human perspective. From the divine, he had finished his work. But 33 and a half years is not long life. I hope you are you hearing what I'm saying. And guess who killed him? It's the people he was killing himself for. In fact, the Bible says one time they got into a house, there were so many people to see them that they didn't even have time to eat bread. And the same people say, crucify him. Better learn from Jesus. Number what now? Are you blessed? Number what? Relationship with the church. With the church. Your spiritual leaders, your brothers and sisters in Christ, learn to build a good relationship with the church. The Bible says in Galatians 6 verse 10, as much as is required of us, it says we should do good to all men, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Maintain a good relationship with the body. Your spiritual leaders honor them. Respect them, even in their weakness. Support them. Don't condole what they do, but support them. Stand with them. Don't slander them. You will be in that position one day and they will slander you. Your brother and sister, treat them with respect and honor. We finish this service now. Some of us will enter our car. Lock the door. You know some of you have those cars that have automatic lock. Once you jam it, buy everything. Then you just drive home. You are driving past people who are trekking. You say, Apostle, kidnap us day these days. I, okay. You continue like that. The day they kidnap you, nobody will help you. What's wrong with saying, oh, uh, sister, are you people going to Damboa Road? We are going to post office. 
and we want to stop at Bulori Roundup. Okay, I can drop you there. Let's go together. In fact, sometimes fool your car with them. Let the car go down. Be excited. Be good to one another. All this fight in the body of Christ, I don't know where we are going to with it. I don't know. Where are we going to? In the last days when we are meant to be united as a house, we are just killing each other. Hey, this one didn't preach well. Hey, this one ch chanting, is, chanting is not scriptural. What, 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 what is it again? Your members that you are preaching to, they sang that song and ascended to the realms that they can hear you. You are now killing the other person. My question for those kind of people, why they don't talk against Muslims? No, go and talk against Muslims now. Talk against politicians. It's your brother, because you know that in the body of Christ, they won't attack you. I'm sorry, but that's cowardice. It's cowardice. It's cowardice. We need to repent. If we continue like this, we can't see revival. But tonight, God is restoring the spirit of unity. In Jesus' golden rule, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, he said, Do to others what you want them to do to you. Relationship thrives on the law of sowing and reaping, giving and receiving, cause and effect. Anything you want from a relationship, give or do to that relationship. Apostle, this guy, since I've been dating him, he doesn't give me money for anything. You to send him money as a woman. Yes. Where is it written in the Bible that is the man that must send money alone? Say, but Papa, wait, 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 wait. Let me answer somebody. Wait. Wait. Let me answer somebody. Somebody say, somebody just replied me that the, eh, but Apostle, the Bible says if a man cannot take care of his own house, are you his house yet? Are you his wife yet? You never marry her and you want to, you want to take the position of a wife. When you marry him, you become the husband. And first, this guy, ever since I've been in a relationship, he doesn't send me money. Okay, you send him money. You send him money once, twice, thrice, and he doesn't respond. Hey, hey, now we can talk about you leaving. But relationship thrives on sowing and reaping. Anything you want to reap from a relationship, you give to it. Don't demand what you have not given. That's why some of us, eh, with due respect, that's why God never answers some of our prayers. We are asking God for things we have never even been grateful for. Some of you, all the money you are asking God for 10 years, the, the body of Christ, that you are, the Christ you are asking for, the body has not felt it once. Every day, God, money, God, money, God is looking at you. Where, where is, when was the last time you took care of one of my servants? Every day, God, my, I've asked you to pay for financial banking. I've asked you to pay for... God is looking at you. What do I gain from your selfish requests? Relationship thrives on sowing and reaping, giving and receiving, cause and effect. Anything you are getting from a relationship, check very well. Maybe you contributed it. Amen. Finally, before we go, strategic relationships you must keep. Strategic relationships you must keep. When you find these kind of relationships in your life, do everything, including punch the devil to his face to keep it. You know, I told you people you must run from. Now I'm teaching you of people you must keep. I give you 10 of them and we'll, we'll close. Number one, those who love you wholeheartedly. Those who love you wholeheartedly. You have seen it that this person's heart, there's nothing hidden against you. They just love you for who you are. Nothing more. You don't need to impress them. Do you want to lose that relationship? Ah. Otherwise, we send you to a psychiatrist. Number two, those who believe in you. Those who believe in you. You are nothing. They still believe in you. They are your greatest cheerleaders when you are nothing. Keep them. Keep them. Number three, those who support you. Don't worry. This pulpit is not supporting me. I'm not resting on it. Are you hearing me? I'm not resting on it. Those who support you, they help you, they give to you. 
one way or the other that is support for you, what is wrong with you? Some of you, there are some pastors that have been very good to you. Even if you are not going to their church, why have you thrown away their relationship to the gutter? What's wrong with you? You know, believers are so, so wonderful in a negative way. The person that God has used, now you are blessed. You have forgotten that person and looked for another person who didn't know where you came from. It's foolishness. And I'm not saying it because I want to keep anybody here. No. When your time here is done or when you are no longer receiving the truth of the word of God here, look for a place where you can grow. Don't look for a place where you just go and jump and shout and after three years, your life is the same way. No. Look for a place where you can grow. If you are no longer receiving from God here, please find a place. But by all means, find somewhere. Don't go to your house and say, we'll do e-church. Strategic relationships you must keep. Those who support you. Number four, those who hate. Hear this. Those who hate or fight those who hate or fight you. Those who hate or fight those who hate or fight you. In other words, those who hate those that hate you. And those who fight those that fight you. What did God say to Abraham? And those who bless you, I will bless. And he that curses you, I will what? It's God that said it. Keep those kind of people. Keep them. You don't have muscle to fight. Keep the people that can fight for you. The Bible says the Lord shall fight for you. He will not appear. He will use men to fight for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Keep them around. Where is miracle? Come. Look at this guy. Come quickly. I like going out with this guy. And then some of my protocol guys like that. Come. In fact, we're trusting God after his, his university education, we should send him to NDA, DSS. Eh? Yes. Direct short service. Let him go and be an officer. You see how big he is, but forget this too. The guy is big, oh. Are you hearing me? I love this guy, oh. I know some of you don't like him. Forgive him, but I love him. Are you hearing me? Look at me like this. Look at me. Even the breeze can contend with me. Those that fight those who fight you, keep them. Even if they are not completely born again, keep them. Why we are interceding for the part that is not born again? Keep them around. Because you will soon meet some unborn again situations and people. And since your Christianity will not allow you to fight, God bless you. Are you happy? Are you excited? Number five, those who speak well of you. I call them men of good report. Keep them around you. First Samuel chapter 19, verse 1 to 7. Jonathan spoke well of David. That was why Saul didn't fight him again. That period. Jonathan spoke to his father. Say, why will you kill somebody that take his life to protect you? Keep men that have good report about you. Not gossipers, not backbiters, blackmailers. They use their gossiping attitude to to snatch your boyfriend from you. And you still call that person your friend. Ruth chapter 2 verse 10 to 12. People spoke good about Ruth. That was why Boaz, Boaz favored her. Those of good report. Those who speak well of you. Number six. Those who rebuke you in love. Those are strategic relationships to keep. Those who rebuke you in love. In love, oh, not the one that will just tell you any answer. If you like, no, call me again. No, 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 no. Say, my dear, please sit down. Let's talk. This thing you did, you know it's unscriptural. This is not the, what the Bible requires of us. And instead of you to apologize, you held on to your pride. This is not becoming of you. I can't be your friend and watch you with this action and support you. That's a good rebook because they said it in secret. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, Master, the man will say, unful rebook is better than secret love. Do it and miss your helper. Uh, 
Is it everybody you rebuke openly? It's people that you know that no matter what you say to them in public, your bonding with them is too strong for them to be offended by anything. Those are the ones you can shout on. Those of you who are leaders, especially in church. You see me now, there are some people I can call and say, my friend, leave this place. And they will leave. And the next day, they will still smile and come and meet me. You try them. They will just meet you outside and say, come. Wait till you talk there. I go beat you here. Be wise. Those who rebuke you in love. Number seven. Those who teach and lead you. Keep those relationships. Build it. Do it by honoring them. Taking care of them. Can I tell you something? Do you know that there are some men of God that God has used to bless us? I don't care what whoever says about it, but the scripture is clear. There are some men of God that God uses to bless us that we should trust God to be financially buoyant to take care of them. Believe me. And I'm not saying it for myself. It's the scripture. Galatians chapter 6 verse 6. He says it. That you can be ambitious to say, Kai, this man that has been teaching me every Sunday, blessing me, let me trust God to begin to do something around that his life that will make him comfortable. And one day you buy a car and say, Apostle, this your trek is embarrassing. No. You have been too much of a blessing to be trekking. Take this car. Apostle, you have blessed me so much. You have changed my life. Look at my children. God help me, I'll build this man a house. Oh, you have not seen it to that place. It's the spirit of the territory that is disturbing us. It's the spirit of the territory. There are people forget let's not talk about it today another day when i'm talking about giving i'll talk about that there's one of them who is so dear to me his birthday is in a few days i didn't wait for that day this morning i saw the heavy seat that i can't make any financial transaction again just that one transaction everything they say i must wait for 24 hours And whether he calls me or texts me to say, I saw it. I don't care. But this man has blessed me. When I was nothing, I used to go on retreat with his message. Listen to it and cry and pray. And those were the messages that inspired me. to Now, today, I'm an apostle blessing nations. And you think I'll fold my hand if God has blessed me. Who cares if he's richer than me? A blessing. The next one, in fact, the plan was to buy a car. But next year, we'll do it. You remain there and keep swallowing and you are not giving back. You think of it, the transformation you receive from those that God used to mentor you. Do you know it's not only you, it affects your children and children and children. You are being instilled with godly values that will affect generations to come. Somebody looks at you, gives you an accurate prophetic word and it moves you from one place to another in destiny. There's nothing too big for that person. There's a man of God in this country. Some of his musicians came together and bought him a private jet. Hey, everybody shout, shout, shout. They shouted and he came down. There's another one. Two of his sons came together and bought him a private jet. They said, Papa, you are traveling too much. And when you miss your flight like this, that's how you'll be traveling on the road. But we don't want anybody to know. He said, keep your anonymity. Give me the jet. That's how he got his first private jet. His name is Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Two sons, two boys. I was asking myself, what in these boys they do? They be Yahoo. <laughs> two. May God give you children in your lifetime that will reward you like that. Amen. Some of them may not give you material things, but their lives will make you proud. Amen. That woman has suffered to take care of you. She taught you how to pray, taught you how to hold on to God, taught you never to give up. She didn't go to school because she wanted to see you through school. Now you are an MSC holder. You are a big boy in a big organization collecting 750. Just drive back to the village and say, Mama, from today, you are not, you are not going to suffer till you die. As long as I'm alive, 
say bye bye to. In fact, leave this house. Don't don't carry anything. Leave leave the poverty. Leave it. Let's go. I will I will clothe you and take care. Some of you need to even plan a vacation for your parents, for your men of God, your prophet. Oh, my God! Look at look at our generation entitled. Last year in December, I got a call from one of my sons, who is not even here. He says, sir, you have been preaching all through the year. You need to rest. I say, it's true. I need to rest. Don't worry. I'm not preaching again. I'll stay in my house and rest. He said, no, sir. You can't rest in Meduguri. They will come after you. Come to Abuja. Pay the flight ticket down to Abuja. Sent security with helocks. Picked me VIP. Down. Wanted to pay for a hotel where per, per night is 50000 I told him, that's too much. I'll stay in your house. I thought that all that treatment was okay. When I flew to another place and I came back to Abuja, another one collected me from him. That one was even the worst. My first business class, that was the one that paid for it, to Lagos. Who am I going to see in Lagos? I just wanted to honor a family to say, I told them I will come do a vacation in their house. The previous day I didn't come. So let me just honor my request. They've been good to me. They are not in SGNI, but they bless me from afar. He said, Apostle, you need to go to Lagos. He paid, I was in a business class to a point where I sat close to, how many of you Reverend Sam Oye? He sat at number one, I sat at number three. I saw him there, like this, look at him, look at me. How many subscribers do I have on, on YouTube by that time? How many followers? It's not about popularity. It's about somebody looking at a man and saying, this is your value to me. This is your worst to me. One time I was staying in the house of this same person. The car they used to carry me is even too big already. You know, bro, Victory, he was there. He saw the helocks. That was the helocks we went to. That is, one day I was to go for a dinner. He told the driver, don't use the helocks. Then I opened the garage. I didn't know there was a car there. They brought out a Lexus Jeep. You know those type you see in TV? <laughs> Completely black. They brought it out. I was afraid of the car. In fact, when I went to the dinner, the person that I went to meet, he said, Apostle, where did you get this born again car from? <laughs> oh, so there are some cars that are born again, some cars are not born again. May God give you children like that. Yeah. And anybody that doesn't like what I'm saying, you are on your own, no? No matter how you criticize me, now God still call me. God still decided he will use me. Uh -huh. In fact, criticize me so that we can grow in popularity. In Jesus' mighty name. I think we should close now. Number eight, those who tell you the truth. Number nine, those who stand with you. You know, those who tell you the truth are those that they will tell you the truth and still stay with you. Number nine, those who stand with you. Number ten, those who will never leave you. And you know who that, who one of such a person is in our life? God. He says, I will never leave you. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Give us that scripture as we close. Hebrews 13, 5. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 6. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Please remain seated. I want to make another call here. I said, number 10. Those who will never leave you. Jesus is the only one that will never leave or forsake you. He's the only one who loves you for who you are, who will stand by you. He's the only one who tolerates all your mess ups and still gives you a promising future. He's the only one that gives you a future with a greater insurance. There's no one like him. Lose everything in this life and have Jesus. You didn't lose anything. Gain all that you can in this life and lose him. You lost everything. Everybody seated. If you are here, 
and you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. You want to have a relationship with him. Or perhaps you used to have a relationship with God. You were born again. But a lot of things have happened and you are no longer serious with God. I've thought about strategic relationships. The most important is a relationship with Jesus. He's calling you now. Don't be ashamed of him because people are here. Say yes to him. Wherever you are, you want to say yes to Jesus or you want to be reconciled afresh with him. I want you to put your right hand on your chest and repeat this prayer after me now. I mean it from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sin. I believe you as my Lord and Savior. I accept you this day and I declare that I will serve you all the rest of my days. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. I know that there's somebody who made that prayer. Wherever you are, please can you stand. If you truly love him to surrender to him, don't be ashamed of him. Stand. I want to see you. If you made that prayer with me, please stand. I'm waiting for you to stand. Hallelujah. Stand. If you are standing, let me see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. God can never be ashamed of you before men. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me in the presence of men, I will be ashamed of you in the presence of my Father in heaven. You can't be ashamed for the one that died for you. Hallelujah. Now, if you are standing, please walk to the front quickly. I want to pray for you. Clap as they come. Celebrate them. Lord, I need you in my... Keep clapping till they are all out. I need you in my life. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you in my life. Church, can you stretch your hands? Pneumatic, please stretch your hands to them and pray for them. This is a noble decision you have made. Those of you in front, I'd like you to lift up your right hand to heaven as a sign of surrender. Father, I pray for these ones. They were not ashamed to be reconciled with you. I declare by the authority of your word that their sins are forgiven. Every handwriting that was written against them by the enemy is cancelled by the blood. We declare that they are victorious, they are born again, and they walk in victory above sin, death, hell, grave, and the devil. And I declare that they will serve you in a covenant, in a covenant relationship all the rest of their days. Help them to be steadfast. Help them to know you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you for this noble decision. I love you for what you have done. And we have a way of talking to you and ensuring that you grow to know God. Please turn to your left. There's a lady waving her hand. Just walk straight to her and our counselors will attend to you quickly. Can you rise and give God a big hand of praise for these ones? I said clap for souls. New matter. Clap for souls. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to pray one prayer point and say, Lord, I've heard your word tonight. Help me to do the right thing. Help me to go the right way. Help me to keep the strategic relationships that you have brought in my life. Help me to make wise decisions about relationships from now. Talk to God. Lift your voice and talk to him. I spoke to you about building a strategic relationship with God. Don't, don't pray as though God is not standing by you. Pray and talk to him as though he's standing right in front of you. 
Lord help me. Lord help me. Parabakasia kotobai. In my life. Maru kosi kete baha. Sanda bakate kete baha sudia. Jesus. In Jesus name. One more prayer point, but there's somebody with a pain on your chest. Where are you? Just put your right hand. You have a pain on your chest. The pain is becoming heavy. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now. Let that affliction depart from your body. In Jesus' mighty name. Check yourself. You are healed. Rush to the front quickly. Let's get your testimony. The rest of us, the second prayer point. Lord, every destiny relationship that you brought to my life that I threw away because of bad attitude. Have mercy and restore. Open your mouth and pray. Don't be too proud to pray. You see, it's pride that makes you not pray. Open your mouth and pray. Every strategic destiny relationship you brought. Those who have been healed of the chest pain, come quickly to the front. Bishop, where is Bishop? Oh, Debbie, talk to them. The rest of you, lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Some of you have lost destiny helpers. People that they are almost irreplaceable in your life. Ask God for mercy and let them be restored. Some of us are suffering now because some people left our lives. If you can be serious to pray and say, Lord, have mercy and restore. So barata parikete barata kabasikete. In Jesus name. First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32. Verse 22 rather. Final prayer point. I wish we had more time to pray. Final prayer point. For at that time, they came to David day by day to help him until it was a great army like the army of God. Oh God, from today, for the rest of my life, send me destiny helpers. Open your mouth and pray. 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 Lord, send me helpers like you did to David. Send me helpers. Men and women of skill and understanding. Men and women of substance and resources. Men and women of influence. Men and women that will become burden bearers that will become systems of defense. New matter, please pray. Lord, every day of my life from today, send me helpers. Send me helpers. I'm tired of living alone. I'm tired of struggling alone. Send me helpers. That's your visa that is delaying. That job that is delaying. You need a helper. You need somebody that can stand for you. Somebody that can speak for you. Some of you, God will send you help in form of marriages. Oh God, send me helpers. You are not praying enough. Lift your voice and pray. That your business idea, so great but has not left the ground. Lord, send me helpers. Send me helpers that we invest in it. Unless God send you helpers, your dreams may die. Strategic help in this season to your family. To your prayer life, Lord, send me helpers. Men and women that will help my prayer life to be on fire. Oh, you are not praying enough. I, I tell you, you are not praying enough. Send me helpers. Shoko para teke pro sokotoba. Zeke prakato sotoko pro dosia. Ekabakasiagaba. In Jesus' name. We are going to pray that prayer again. Listen. We are going to pray for God to send you helpers as touching your spiritual life. 
You need people that will help your prayer life be on fire. People that will help your work with God to stay on track. That you will not backslide because of these people. When you think of falling to a temptation and you remember, even if you have forgotten God, you remember that friend, you will stay on course. Some of us have bypass. In fact, it's people that will tempt us into, bring us into temptations that are around us. And I want you to pray with all seriousness. Lord, send me strategic helpers that will help me benefit in my spiritual life. Pneumatech, open your mouth and pray. Please pray. Please pray. Everybody pray. Your destiny, your work with God is at the mercy of this prayer. Some of you are called into ministry. Lord, send me help us. Men and women of God like myself that will help me to stand. Sabakotobaya. In Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a help that is suitable for him. You are going to pray for yourself. Lord, make me a suitable helper to someone. Lift your voice and pray. Remember, I told you relationship exists on the law of sowing and reaping. If you help others, God will raise others to help you. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, make me a suitable help for somebody. Make me a suitable help for somebody. Make me a suitable help for somebody. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, you have taught us the strategic power of relationships. Help each and every one of us. Online and on site. Restore to us by your mercy destiny relationships that we lost because of our carelessness. Take away from our lives vipers, parasites, predators. Take away from us people that tolerate us. Bring those who will celebrate us. Bring those that will encourage us. Bring those who will become the human representation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit as the helper. Let me say it again. Bring those who will become the human representation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit as the helper. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I prophesy to someone this week, may God bring help as your way. Your season of struggling alone is over. That your job issue, that visa issue, whatever it is that you are stuck in, may God send you that one man that will help you to pull through. I said, may God send you that one man that will help you to pull through. I say, may God send you that one man or woman that will help you to pull through. Your brother doesn't have a job. Your sister is looking for admission. One relative or family member is struggling with this or that. May God raise a helper for your family. And may God make you a strategic helper to somebody. May God make in such a way that people will be thanking God every day because you are alive. Amen. Apostle, but I don't have money. Receive the empowerment to occupy that position. Amen. You don't believe it. May God make people thank him every day because you are alive. 
that anytime they hear that you just have a headache, they can do three days night vigil to ensure that you are fine. Men and women that will stand to defend and support you. And on this wise, do exploits for the kingdom. Jesus, mighty name we pray. If you have been blessed, please put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be seated for three minutes and we'll be done. Thank you for staying. But please listen to this announcement before you go. Yes, you have testimonies. Yes. That gentleman with white at the back, I saw the one that had pain. Check yourself. The pain is gone. Check it. I knew when it lifted. Check yourself. Press it. If you don't feel it, rush forward quickly. Yes, sir. Yes, Papa, sir. This is Mia. She, she had this chest pain mm -hmm. for, for a very long time. Yes. It's so severe that it goes to the back. And yes. it does not, it, uh, she can't lift her hands it properly. It radiates to the back and you yes. can't lift your hands. She hand. can't lift her hands properly. But if now, I, now she can lift it. Let's see. Give God praise. How long has she had that pain? I cannot be exact, but it's been long that I cannot even wear bra. I just wear strapless. Can you clap your hands and give Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. That, that must have been some years. It is permanent and it will never return again in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, sir, this is Miriam. Uh -huh. She also had a chest pain, even uh -huh. in the service. Mm -hmm. But the moment the declaration came forth, the, the, the pain disappeared. Glory be to Jesus. It is gone and will never return again in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Final testimony before we go. Is the pain still there? No. Okay. Uh, the pain is still there. It's still there? Yes, sir. Okay, come. You need a touch. All right. Now, come. Um, before we go, I wanted to announce to us about two things. Father, how long have you had this pain? Two years this is an affliction. Now I send this arrow back to hell. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Check him, it is gone. Now clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Amen. First announcement. Next Sunday is going to be. The pain is gone, sir. Give Jesus the loudest clap of hands that you have. Look at that, look at that. Look at that. Hallelujah. I never see this kind of before. Wonder, wonder. Hallelujah. Be seated. One minute. <laughs> he was shot. Hallelujah. You know. When you say, ah, some of you, you are distracted, you don't know. <laughs> Two years, arrow is returned back to hell. In Jesus' name. I wonder what God will do at miracle service two Sundays. <laughs> Hear me? Now, to that effect, next Sunday is going to be a revival Sunday. All right? No long talk. No long talk is going to be prayer fire, power, prophecy, raw. Are you hearing me? So gather all your stubborn friends and bring them here. It's when stubborn people are around that God moves more. Amen. You know, the gentleman even forgot, I knew when he was healed. As soon as, as, soon as God had touched him, the pain lifted, but he didn't get the healing instantly because his faith had not been tuned. You see that the healing power can be on you, but you will not be healed because your faith has not opened up to receive it. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's why I needed a torch. So gather them next Sunday's Revival Sunday. That's how we'll publicize it online. Revival Sunday. Share the flyer everywhere. Be crazy about it. Gather people. Go from house to house. Knock on their door. When they go new matter, no, follow me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If I catch you, come to come here next Sunday alone. Amen. Well, if you want now, because of the economic crunch, hear me, because of the economic crunch and the hardship in the country, we decided as a ministry, by the grace of God and by our magnanimity, to provide buses to transport people. 
Now, this is what you'll do. If you want a bus to come to your area, help us ensure that you can mobilize at least 15 people and above. All right? We can get buses, these coastal buses or the longer one. Some of you, that's even your calling. Mobilize people. You can't preach, but you can gather people. So, as many as you can, any location, call our public relations before Sunday, next Sunday. Uh, call them, let them know the amount of people that you have and we'll send a bus to pick them, okay? So that you don't have to pay transport going and coming. A bus will bring you here and take you back to your destination. Is that good? So let's make it a date. Next Sunday we are here, 3 p.m., live and direct, and even online. And then for the Bill Crusade. Um, <laughs> amen. We've been going back and forth with the date because of the venue. Um, we've been having a little challenge with getting a venue uh, for the crusade. Uh, because some of the facilities we want to use belong to churches and either they will not give you or the one that will give you will say, oh, we have a program by that date. So which date are we going for now? Can we go for the first week of July, which is less than two weeks from now? Or do we postpone? Amen. Okay. Um, this week, you, we are going to bring a flyer out with the venue and the date. We are going to make some consultations. Uh, by tomorrow at the worker service, we will know. We are not going to suspend the crusade, okay? The devil is a liar. We will go to Bill, whether he likes it or not. Amen and amen. Please send us your prayers. This is where we need your prayers the most, okay? Every time you see this kind of difficulty, God wants to do something great. Are you hearing me? The last time we went to be in 2018, we had this kind of opposition. But God moved. So I'm not surprised. Paul said, I wanted to come to you again and again. But Satan hindered. This Satan, this time, will crush his head. We must go there. In Jesus' name. And I mean it. will crush his head. Stand on your feet. Amen. So those of us workers, see you tomorrow at the service. 4.30 p.m. at Fina Hall. Tomorrow, it will be announced to you. And then from Tuesday, our flyers will circulate online the date and the venue for Bill Crusade. Send us your prayers. Send us your financial material support. Encourage us. Share the flyers online. Let's be active about it, okay? Let me even give you an assignment. When you go, go to our channels on YouTube and Facebook. Go and comment on the service. Huh? Keep it busy. In fact, I permit you now, during service, be making comment on the channel or the page. Don't chat with your girlfriend. The relationship will not prosper. Make comment. Are you hearing me? So go this night. And if you don't know, we're on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channels. Like our Facebook page. I'm on Facebook now. Yes. Apostle Jonathan Lagan. So go there, like the page. We, are, we already have hundreds of people. Huh? The last time you showed me was 100 and something or so. Was it up to? 180 there about. Okay, we'll get to 1,000 very soon. 3,000, 70,000, 100,000. God bless you. I'm so glad you came. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lift up his countenance upon you. Give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please hug two, three people before you go and just bless them.